again. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, because I know in Hawaii it's afternoon. I know in Canada, where I'm at, it's evening. And I know we have people from Europe and the Middle East that are going to be watching this too as well. So again, thank you for joining us for Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Alda Cascos. Uh, I'm his co-host, Sunny Pabuaya from Canada. Again, I'm here to interview actually Sifu Al today because people were wondering, how was he doing? And instead of me answering those questions from all these emails and text message and phone calls I've been getting because he just came out of uh, a major back surgery that so it's been about a month now right Sifu? Yeah, pretty close to me a month and a half. Okay so now we're going to actually ask a few questions but first of all let me introduce you to the man so Sifu Al de Cascos. Hello. Hey I'm glad to be back on and enjoying the weather here in Hawaii as well as I know you guys in Canada are freezing your butts off which is fine with me because we have a lot of Canadian ducks that fly here during the during the winter months anyway. <laughs> but hey, I'm glad to be back on and I know there's a lot of questions people have been asking me and uh, rather than just, um, you know, get on it uh, on an individual basis, it's best that I just mess, uh, let's say mess, speak to it uh, because it's a lot easier. So um, without, you know, stalling any time, I mean, let's get right back into it and you ask the questions because this is basically a question question uh, um, well an a and q period and um yeah all right well basically what it is today sifu and what we're going to do is we're going to actually be hosting ask sifu out of questions uh class or podcast or whatever you want to call this so if anybody of you watching right now or watching later on the replay by all means write in the comments questions that you have or message me or see well directly and then this way we'll have it ready for the next one so now first of all Sifu um, because everybody's asking me what were you in for I know it was a major back surgery but at the same time people were just curious because they of course they care about you and they want to make sure that you are getting better and that uh, you're on the men's and then pretty soon you'll be back up and at it teaching everybody what you do, what you do best all right you want to know about why i went into the sh surgery yes uh, okay well that's an old injury injury that i got in 1979 back in hamburg germany um i actually had a, a boxing coach uh, there was my assistant and we were actually teaching class and after class, you know, um, he's pretty, he's a good masseur, you know, as well as a boxing coach, he does a good masseuring job. So what he did was he just went back and, uh, you know, massaged my back and everything else this week, because after working out, you feel kind of tight. Then <laughs> he did something that I never approved of, which was he told me to sit at the edge of the table and he went up on the table, grabbed my back and told me to relax. I didn't know what he was going to do. He just went clack and then my back went tup, 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 right down there and something snapped at my low back. He asked me, is everything okay? Naturally, I was in pain. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, because I, I didn't want him to, to, to hurt me anymore. Yeah. yeah. But that, from that point on, what happened was just that um, I've never been the same. Um, yes. Because what had happened was that he had fractured and it caused a slip disc on my um, L4 and L5 and my my, my, my tailbone area. So uh, I suffered through that for all the years and about 20 years later, uh, let's say back, this was in 1979, but when I was back in uh, uh, Portland, Oregon in, in the 1980s, you know, um, I, I did everything. I went through acupuncture, acupressure, electric shock, you name the whole thing. And it never worked. And uh, my doctor had told me then, you know, uh, you're going to have to have surgery. But uh, yes. at that particular time, you know, I mean, surgery, I don't think it was really that good because the laser surgery wasn't as it is now. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So going forward, you know, um, about a year ago, I was I was really having some really excruciating pain. You know, my it limited my kicking techniques, my moving techniques, and and things this way. So my doctor said, well, it's time now to to get the surgery. So they operated on my L3, and then that was last year, and then one year later, which was October 5th uh, this this year, then I went in and uh, yes. uh, you know came out and actually stayed in the hospital for three three and a half weeks. I actually hated the hospital then because they, <laughs> <laughs> although everything was good, I came up fine. What was what was really funny was just that um, they put me up on the sixth floor, way up on the top. And you know this is rehab, but um, and my and the only scenery I had, my my back window was uh, uh, parking stalls. It's all I could see. I could see no oceans, no nothing. So it was kind of boring. It every morning getting up, looking at parking stalls, cars going in yes. and out. You know. Yeah. And when they would take me for the exercise, I would walk around in the sixth floor, and I and I kept thinking about it. Man, this is wrong. Man, this is this this is not me not me and I kept thinking you know why I was feeling that way but when I kept, kept looking about it in every single room that I pass on the sixth floor people mm-hmm. had boots coming out of their nose they were old people and everything I felt I think they got me in the wrong place this looked like a hospice you know? so <laughs> <laughs> it was freaking me out so I go up to the, the nurse and said hey you know all these people over here got all kinds of tubes coming out of them. Why am I in this place here? They said, oh, they're, oh, they're all recovering. I said, I don't know, man. Some of them look like they're ready to die. <laughs> so, <Boy. laughs> it was, it was I, I felt like I was in the wrong place. Anyway, yes. I feel good. I feel really, really uh, more energetic. And I feel that um, I'm going to be back mm. up on par, getting my yes. kick. Because after he injured my, my, uh, my back, uh, some of you have seen my poses where I could bring my leg up and just hold it up like that. Oh yes. But that's why I could only bring it up that way, you know, only yeah. only at the 45 or 90 degree, and I couldn't go all the way up. Now I feel good. I feel energetic, as in, um, I think I got new life. Yeah. Yeah. How it is? Well, I'm actually really excited, Sifu, because I know that we have a lot of things lining up for you, uh, for even from traveling to doing seminars, because I know now you are actually open to uh, doing more seminars soon, as soon as uh, traveling is a little bit easier. But I know we have a few things scheduled, so I'm excited about that. So now, uh, one of the next questions that I actually have from one of the uh, people that messaged me was um, MMA, okay? I know that for you, it means more than mixed martial arts. But at the same time, when did MMA really originate? It? Did it originate when they said UFC and MMA and all that? So I want to hear it straight from the source, sir. So what is your take on MMA and the meaning of MMA? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of people is going to be claim, are making claims to MMA, you know, and um, you know, and one of that you got to give credit to UFC because they really brought it out. Yes. But, but there's a big difference between UFC and MMA. You know, UFC is a business entity that promotes uh, MMA and using that as their 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 uh, spear, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. MMA naturally, a lot of you know that this means mixed martial arts, mixed martial arts. But that's one part of that that there's two groups of people, and uh, I belong to the minority group, which call MMA mean martial arts instead of mixed martial arts and we do it on account that um you know the, the, as far as i'm concerned now this is just my my perspective you know, the yes. the first the first original mma or mixed martial arts actually came from hawaii i mean people can lay claim that it came from all over the place but you have to realize that a lot of the people that were uh you know post world war ii you know, studied in Japan or in Asia and uh, brought back all kinds of martial arts. And they were, the landing point was here in Hawaii, you know, and it became really, really mixed. You have the screamer, Filipino fighting arts, the judo, jiu-jitsu, you know, you had Aikido, you have karate and taekwondo. I mean, they come here, they mix, and then they, have to go back to the mainland and, you know, go all over the place, you know. But yes. um, I know that when we talk about uh, mixed martial arts, you know, a lot of people right now refer to that as being a, uh, the 
the sport version. And by the way, you know, it's the one. It's, mm-hmm. it's um, when people ask about you know what is the most popular martial arts in the world, you'd have to stay yes. at MMA. You know, uh, for now, yeah. Uh, yes. Because the trend going on. Um, but anyway, we go back to that today. When you talk about MMA when it started, some people say that it started November 12, 1993. But you could go back 10 years earlier, where some people say, well, it started in, you know, in uh, Philadelphia, you know, um, uh, there. But, you know, we'd have to say that it, it started in the early 1980s, maybe late 1970s, uh, where they used to have. Uh, mixed martial arts here in Hawaii, but it never was called mixed martial arts. It was mm-hmm. called open style competition, you know? Mm-hmm. So that means you would have wrestlers, boxers, and jujitsu people and everybody come inside and the rules rules wasn't really, really there. Because if you take a look right now, even to this, to this day, there is no official governing body that has one standard rule for MMA. I mean, yes. you've got you've got guys that do their mixed martial arts in a in a cage, and some of them in a in a square and things this way. So they set up different types of rules, and it's pretty much according to the country and and to the state because sometimes state comes inside and regulate that with the boxing commission. So it's 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 pretty well uh, you know um, dictated according to I would say the promoter or the state mm-hmm. you know, or they're yes. working with the boxing commission this way. There's no standard, but it can go anywhere between. 31 to 36 rules that they have inside. Mm-hmm. That's the mixed martial arts sports version. When you get into the mean martial arts, the hell with it. All rules go out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people say, well, that's hard to regulate to see, well, what martial arts is is is, is works in uh, mean martial arts because, you know, it, as when you get into the sports version of mixed martial arts, you know who's going to win. There's a control factor also. You know, if you're getting your, yeah. getting your butt beat out, then, you know, your judge I might probably throw the towel in and you mm-hmm. and you know getting into the mixed martial arts you already know at least a couple of months in advance who you're fighting you know who mm-hmm. the person you're fighting you know what weight what kind of experience how many fights he's had and so forth when you get into mid martial arts it's out in the street you don't know you might be fighting one person and then you got a baseball bat coming out of the back of your head that's mixed martial arts okay yes. mean, very mean martial arts so it's this it's this you say <laughs> so so when people say, well, which is better, mean martial law, mixed martial arts, it's totally different. You know, one is a war game and the other one is war. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, that's terrific. And uh, I guess with your experience, I mean, you've got a lot of experience under your belt and you've seen a lot of different forms of martial arts. One of the other questions that uh, comes up many times over is, which one would you consider or would be one of the better ones i guess is it is it judo is it karate is it kung fu is it taekwondo is it kung fu i mean everybody has their say i would like to hear it from you what (laughs) your opinion is on that sir you know they're all good you know every martial arts good you know um you know Professor Amparato, the founder of Kaju Kembu, said that the man that masters his own art is a very hard man to beat. You know, yes. I believe in that uh, because it also comes with a set of mind. And the most yes. dangerous weapon you have is the six inches between temple to temple. So it's yes. a mindset. Well, you know, I would. People ask me that all the time. Who would you, who would you have, you know, covering your back if you had to, you know, defend yourself? And I would just kind of laugh and think, you know, if if I had a choice on, on people, I would want a person, yeah, who probably spent a whole many years in prison and just got out, because they learn martial arts in prison, but not the kind of martial arts that we call the traditional. In the prison system, it's only the, the art of survival. Who's going to be walking out alive? So then yeah. if I have a traditional martial artist who's thinking about Bushido and thinking about good and bad and everything, you know, um, that would be my second choice. But if a guy just came out of prison, and he's really mean ass, you know, he don't give a damn about whether he dies or not. This is the person I'm going to take because he he has nothing to lose. He's going to give it all. 
You see, mm-hmm. and he may not, he may not know, he may not be the kick, the best kicker or puncher and everything, but don't let him get his hands on you because you're going to turn, to be turned into a hamburger. You know, yes. because I've seen so many of this. You know, I've worked with some people in the prison systems and everything, and and I've witnessed these guys. They, they don't know martial arts and they don't care about it because all they think of how they how they can make a a, a spike out of a tooth. Uh, out of a, a toothbrush or how to how to make make uh, something they can stab out of anything they find or how they use the fish and and you know that everything that when happens in the prison system is ambush attack it's not mm-hmm. you face my face it's all ambush attack so these yes. guys are real master of ambush attack and that's the way it is out on the street i would yes. like to have him right by me about two three feet away from me you know and helping me out and just jump in because i tell you the opponent that i'm facing with is never know never going to know who's going to hit him and how it's yes. going to be you see what i mean it's just <laughs> mindset total mindset yes. now if you have a martial artist you know who's 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 got total experience but got that but got that criminal mentality of total total survival like a pit bull yeah that would be a damn good combination mm, wow yeah i i can actually picture that sir i mean that's pretty crazy um next question i had for you sir is that you know you've been at you've been in the martial arts for many years i mean you've done the training you've done competition you've done a lot of things you've taught many people from uh beginners to advance you know and what i've always loved about you is that you are considered still and will always be the professional maximizer and what i wanted to ask you personally was you know do you have a favorite memory or match that you had with like say um uh like even like with superfoot bill wallace or oh. or joe Lou. i know you know you you've come up with a, uh, against a lot of these guys chuck norris joe lewis all these people you know <laughs> Do you have a favorite memory of either whether you fought or trained with them? You know, give us a story that nobody really knows about. And and I'm sure a lot of a lot of listeners would love to hear an actual story from from the source, you could say, rather than hearsay. Well, I've had a lot of good memories, especially with Bill Wallace, Joe Lewis, Chuck Norris, Benny Ucatis, and some of the greatest, yeah? Yes. But but one of my most memorable fights was in Chicago. Other, uh, out of this person, and I can't even remember his name, because that fight was so memorable to me because he hit me in an area that I wouldn't, I didn't expect him to get hit by, okay? And... <laughs> And he did it with the technique that I always do on people. And I never thought that this guy has been watching my, uh, uh, what do you call camera, super eights, and yes. studying me all this time, studying out this me. And he told me, and went after, after, after uh, we fought, it's just that when I fought him in Chicago, you know, um, I went inside to do a spinning back face and turning, turning side kick, but he wasn't there. He was on the ground, kicking me right in the groin. <laughs> and it folded me over. It folded me over. And I just, son of a gun, what happened here? You know, and he looked at me and he smiled. You see, okay. The fight went on and I beat him. You know, mm-hmm. after he said, you know, I've been watching you and I got you on film. So I figured you would come up with a spinning back fist and then a, 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 a spinning hook kick. Uh, yeah. And I just did exactly what you do to everybody else. Is you drop? I said, "Man, hey, right on." And it was really, really <laughs> good. that that one. I, I, I'd never forget uh, because um, um, you never know who's watching you and finding out the type of technique you have and studying yeah. it. You see, so so that was it. Yeah, and I think the the most memorable fights I have is not the one that I won. It's the ones that I lost. You know? Yes. Because the one that I lost makes me think. I said, "I'm not going to do this again." You know, it made me think about it because mm-hmm. if I'm studying other people how they fight, then they're also studying the way that I fight. You see, yes. and I had to be one up on it. The other one I had, I will never forget this guy. His name is Dave Pettigrew, out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and mm-hmm. 
and I was defending champion, grand champion on this one here. And yeah. um, we won, we won, you know, we went, you know, fought, uh, fought. and at this time it was, uh, you know, first, first, uh, first three points win for the grand mm -hmm. championship, right? Because we yes, had going yeah. uh, 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 back and forth. And the score at the end of it was 3-0. He beat me 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed because that yeah. was my championship. That was the North American, uh, North American uh, national championship. I had mm -hmm. won it three years in a row, and he took it away from me, right? Yes. Because he's been studying me, you know. Yes. And then, and then, uh, you know, he, he knew what it was exactly was what I was going to do because I had a, I had a plan. But yes. one thing about plan is that the plan is good until somebody hits you and your plan goes right out the door. You don't work anymore. Yeah. You see what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah. And then next would be, I know that you and a bunch of other masters uh, represented U.S. to go to the, uh, to China. Uh, I believe there was videos on it where it was, I believe there was you, uh, Professor Wally J. There was George Dillman. There was, oh my gosh, there was a whole slew of you guys going to China. Can you give us a little bit of history on that, on why and how it kind of panned out? Because, you know, I remember seeing the videos where you were doing some things and it was incredible. And I believe the, uh, the, uh, the people in China were quite impressed by it. I think it was in 1983, 1984. I, yes. um, about a couple of years after I got back from Hamburg, Germany. Yes. And I was invited by uh, Wally J. And he wanted me to be the the the, the co the co team captain because he was the captain of the uh, the team, so yes. I was the co team captain. And we went with about uh, about eight to ten masters from the United States, you know, representing Taekwondo, uh, Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu, uh, uh, Kung Fu, Karate, the, the whole bunch of things. And some of the some of the fighters went there, and we were invited to go there by by the uh, Beijing Wushu team, you know, that were at that time in the early uh, late 1970s was going all over the world promoting Wushu. So yes. they, they invited uh, the very best people that they considered to be the top in the United States. So, you know, we had to put together this, uh, the, the people that we, we felt that represent America uh, good. It was called the Martial Arts Representative Team. You know? Yes. Um, uh, so it's just M A R T, Mart. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we, we went there and uh, uh, demonstrated uh, demonstrated there, and uh, we went from the city of Xi'an to Beijing to Shanghai, uh, various different cities uh, of demonstrating, and actually meeting really some of the top uh, kung fu masters in the world. Um, they call it the living treasure of China, That's and it. a lot of them were into. Right, the li yeah, and if yeah. you find the video, it's called "Living Living Treasures of China." Yes, um, you probably find it. It's about a twelve-volume uh, series, and they recorded everything. And on, I think in series number three, this is one. It was talking just strictly about the the, the U.S. martial arts team and our uh, and our experience and everything this way. Anyway, on that video series, it talks about all the individual masters going from Xinhe to Tai Chi to Pakwa, to different styles of Kung Fu, what is going to be, you know, I call it Wushu or whatever. It was so yeah. many different, different versions. Well, we had an opportunity to, to demonstrate. And one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed was just when we were in the Shaolin Temple. Mm -hmm. We were in the Shaolin Temple there. And um, at that particular time, there wasn't too many foreigners that were invited to, to demonstrate, and, and yes. demonstrate in there, see? so. I had one of my students at that time, Bill Owens and I, you know, we went yes. and uh, uh, Bill Owens is pretty good in the Brazilian art of uh, capoeira. You know? capoeira. Yeah. And um, I was just a beginner. I mean, I knew the move, basic movements and you know, things this way. So, so we, uh, we, they asked us to, to, to show what is the American version of fighting. So we did American fighting, you know, we're doing our uh, contact and point and, you know, we're hitting mm -hmm. each other with hard cuts and everything else this way because yeah. we were trying to impress them, you know? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so 
you know, and they look at us and they say, they, 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 one of the moms says, you don't do that because you make too much contact. Somebody might die, you know, because, you know, they, you know, a lot of what they were doing was, and at that particular time, they wasn't doing that much of contact. Everything was formed, beautiful mm -hmm. forms in the 1980s. Yes. You know I mean? And they never really got into any kind of full contact until maybe uh, 10 years later. And, you know, now, they, now they're pretty up to date, yeah. But at yes. that particular time, everything was based on forms, yeah. So, so that was real school. So we did our demonstration. Bill Lawrence and I did our demonstration, and and uh, was was pretty impressive. And then and then um, they said, "Oh, we all can still do the Brazilian, you know, cup water." So we did our jingle movements and kicks and everything mm -hmm. else. We had never seen that before. And yes. then we we were in, in Beijing when we did that exactly the same thing. We had they had thousands and thousands of uh, people in this humongous hall and that's the first time i ever met uh jet lee he was just beginning to come up there nobody knew him, him then you see what i mean yeah so we met him we saw him inside that we only heard the name jet lee well he wasn't called jet lee but the face you you, you recognize yes. everything and then when he started to get popular i said hey that's the guy that we met and that's that's the guy that we had dinner with the night afterwards you see what i mean so it was yes. It was really awesome. Yeah, it was a good experience there. Oh, wow. That's yeah. that's terrific. I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of stories and a lot of memories because, you know, you were there at the beginning. And I'm not trying to age you or anything, and, but I love it where, right, you know, no problem, people can actually go straight to the source and learn from you, you know, and... And that's the way it should be. They should go straight to the source. And that's why I myself personally like to go straight to the source because you are the mat, all right? And so um, I know we're gonna cut this a little bit short because we're running out of time, but just giving everybody a heads up, uh, our next one, Sifu Al, is gonna talk about a little bit more on where uh, they're talking about it in the news and stuff right now. Is Kaju Kembo dead? Is it dying? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that suspense to you guys to come watch the next one because Sifu Al will be talking about that a little bit more. Also, if you want to know a little bit more of One Hup Kendo, guess what? We're going to be asking him about when why, how did he start One Hub Kendo? Okay, so again, if you guys have questions or any comments, write them down below. Don't forget, if this is your YouTube that you're watching, your you or you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, let people know. You can also check out Sifu Al's videos. It's on uh, thecascosmartialarts.com. Otherwise, Sipu Wild, thank you very much. I just, like I said, I don't want to take up too much time right now on you because you're still recovering and you're still strategizing all the things that are coming up. And so I thank you, thank you, thank you for taking part of this. So unless you have any other thing you want to comment on or say? Really quickly, if some okay. of you haven't, haven't seen this book, there it is, Legacy, you can pick it up and it's on Amazon.com. Yes. And then also, just to let you know that uh, comes April in Salt Lake City, I'll be doing a seminar, but there's going to be a lot of seminars coming in before then. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I thank you guys for joining in. Corinne, Nikki, uh, uh, Christian Wolf, and Joel. You know, there's a lot of you out there. Thank you for joining in. I'm sure you got a lot of questions. And uh, really, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, because if you don't want to ask, mm -hmm. what happens is that you go home with the questions and I, I go to bed with the answers, you know? So <laughs> let it go, all right? All right, guys, take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Right. Enjoy the weather, whatever the weather is at, whether it's warm in Hawaii or cold and freezing your butt off in Canada, still enjoy it. <laughs> no, there's a reason for it, all right? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Mahalo.